Equal pay and the delay was the issue of the day for the STLP today. They're calling for the Finance Minister Nigel Dodds to ensure civil servants receive their back pay, which in total could be around £100 million, to be paid within three months. That's what the STLP want, and here's how the STLP's Declan O'Lone put it in the chamber today. This is coming from a minister, from a minister of course, who would not revise his budget to address this or, or, or other pressures, as the SDLP have repeatedly asked him to do. And yet he is now saying that if the civil service press for their perfectly legitimate claim, that that will lead uh, to uh, further uh, job cuts in the, in the civil service. Uh, there's been quite a bit of talk about the hundred millions and it being available, and indeed a, a number of the officials seem to, to uh, they are writing to me as to many other members, and they are talking about the minister having banked a hundred million to deal with this problem. And let's be clear that the minister has not banked anything to deal with this problem and has no money to put in the bank to deal with this problem. So when there is talk of a hundred million, let's uh, identify what that is, is about. Be clear that the hundred million that's been talked about from Downing Street is not real. There is not an extra penny piece in the Northern Ireland bloc in the Minister's budget to deal with this issue. All that is in offer is permission to use some existing money already allocated for other purposes and to borrow more, money that will have to be paid back on top, of course, of the additional borrowings that are going to be, have to be paid back in relation to the Chancellor's recent budget. I wonder how does all this look from the perspective of, the, of these 9,000 civil servants, who are, of course, relatively uh, low-paid officials? How do they feel when they have to negotiate for their rightful salary, their rightful salary, with senior civil servants who have no delay at all in allocating to themselves very large bonuses? I wonder how do they, how do they feel when they recall Peter Robinson's promise to settle and they look at his expenses claims? There is no second home allowance for them. There is no £400 monthly food bonus for them. I do not think they will be at all pleased with Peter Robinson's put-down remark about people not being happy until he is sleeping on a park bench. I do not see a lot of sign of Peter or likelihood of Peter Robinson uh, sleeping on a park bench, nor do I think that he is losing much sleep at all over the situation in relation to uh, his 9,000 civil servants. Well, the DUP's Simon Hamilton mounted his white charger and rode to the defence of the finance minister. To try to dismiss the, either uh, what this, the interest of this minister, his predecessor, or indeed this party on this side and this chamber is absolutely gross distortion of the truth. Um, we are deeply committed to seeing the principle of equal pay uh, for work of equal value uh, adhered to within the Northern Ireland civil service. And, this, uh, and I understand, I have to say, Mr. Speaker, I very much understand the frustration uh, of civil servants at the, the length of time it takes to resolve this issue. Uh, I can sympathise with them for that, I mean, um, but they, myself, they, and everybody here should at least realise that this is an extremely complex issue. This is not something that's simple or straightforward. Indeed, if it was, it would have been resolved a long time ago, and there are a lot of issues as to why it is not a simple or straightforward matter. Uh, we, we talk about these notions of equal pay for work of equal value, but what does, work, what does equal pay equate to? What is equal pay? There is no current structure or format in place to say what equal pay relates to. Hence the need for, because the, where, where those administrative staff that the proposer of the motion talked about are comparing themselves as those who are in technical grades, the TG1 and the TG2, where the job re-evaluation is going on at present. And I can see now, obviously, it adds to some, some frustration, as, as, the, as the, the proposer talked of. I can understand that. But it is absolutely necessary that, if looking into settling this whole claim, that the foundations are firm, that the figures are exact and are as correct as they can be. And that is that, therefore, there is a need to have a job re-evaluation. Uh, and there is also the need, I would suggest, for negotiations, perhaps in the future, with Treasury on the matter. Or indeed, within the oh, let, let, let me finish. Uh, or indeed, with the with the executive, because whatever resolution of this will have to be brought within the executive. And, and if the minister is to make the case to his colleagues within the executive, he needs to have very firm, very exact figures to go on the basis of. Hence, the, the need for for the review. I think that's something that's very simple and straightforward. And there's also, of course, the very obvious benefit, Mr. Speaker, of 
of having a job re-evaluation to end all of this for the future, so that in the future there is no need for all of this sort of rigmarole over claims like this. We have, a, we have everybody on the same playing field and everybody moving forward on that basis. I will now give way to the member. Uh, given his agreement with me that comparability is at the heart of this, uh, would he explain why this exercise in comparability is only starting a full year after the minister, that, uh, the minister at the time, uh, Peter Robinson, said he wanted to settle? Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, that is a matter which the, the, minister, uh, the member can put to the minister. I'm sure the minister has heard that. He can answer that. I, I, all I can say is that I can see the logic behind the decision to do it. I wish he would appreciate the, need to, the, 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 the very real logic that there is in having comparability there. And if that, need, if that requires a job re-evaluation, I'm sure he wouldn't want to see just some figure plucked out of mid-air that, I, that it is important, therefore, to do it. The timing is a matter for others to, 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 to answer. I can't obviously do that myself. I'm not the finance minister. Uh, there are other... Com- yeah. They're, they're oh, I'm, I'm, it's not. It's not blushing. It's not blushing. It's the. It's the sun. It's the sun. Hey, you go, <laughs> it's the sun. Um, um, Maybe may a hospital pass in the circumstances, <laughs> Mr. Speaker. Uh, but uh, there are other complexities with this matter as well. Not least the issue of resources and the budgetary implications. And uh, the proposer touched on these issues. And he is right in this sense that it doesn't matter. So if somebody has a right to equal pay, that right is absolute in this regard. However, there are very clear budgetary and financial implications to this. And this is what makes, I think, the, the original motion somewhat ludicrous in saying that not, it's not only that it needs to be resolved or that you know, there's some agreement between both parties, but that, that st- staff affected receive their back pay within three months. Now, that is, that is clearly something that is very difficult to achieve if, if the figure is as high as has been estimated. Um, and and to, to just to say that that would be, be, be found within three months, I think, is quite ludicrous, Mr Speaker. Uh, yes, there is access to some $100 millions there, but in reality, the figure which is settled upon could be much higher than that. Uh, and, and obviously, then, it extends from that that there are implications, budgetary implications beyond that as well. And everyone involved, the staff, the unions ourselves in this chamber and beyond, others beyond must therefore be aware uh, that the cost of settling this could actually be counterproductive for public services. Simon Hamilton uh, there uh, rejecting the STLP motion on equal pay and then somewhat strangely a short time later the DUP withdrew their amendment and the STLP motion was carried. So the original ludicrous motion has been passed. The STLP are cock a hoop.